Welcome. My name is Tom Landy. I'm the director of the McFarland Center for Religion, Ethics, and Culture here at the College of the Holy Cross. And I'm here to introduce a talk by a man who brings together two aspects of the work that I do and the McFarland Center does at Holy Cross. The McFarland Center sponsors and supports programs that explore basic human questions of meaning, morality, and mutual obligation. Father Lawrence Fernandez, who I'm here to introduce, is spending the 2018-2019 academic year at Holy Cross as a visiting International Jesuit Fellow, a program the McFarland Center coordinates. Given the work that I also do leading Catholics and Cultures, an initiative on global Catholicism, I feel especially fortunate to have him on campus. Catholics and Cultures explores diverse practices and values of Catholics living in different countries and cultural contexts around the world. I suspect, in fact, that many of you are accessing it through its website, catholicsandcultures.org. A native of Mangalore in Karnataka, India, Father Lawrence Fernandez is a Jesuit who teaches at the Indian Jesuit Philosophy Center, Satya Nilayam, in Chennai, India. He's director of the Satya Nilayam Research Institute, where he guides PhD research, organizes seminars, and publishes a biannual journal, the Satya Nilayam Chennai Journal of Intercultural Philosophy. He's author of three books, one here, great book, and the editor, uh, editor of two of them. At Holy Cross, Father Fernandez is researching on patterns of lived Catholicism and its intercultural philosophical orientations and teaching courses on Indian religions in the Religious Studies Department. His talk today is titled, Lived Catholicism, an Indian Experience. So please join me in welcoming Father Fernandez. Good morning to you all. I'm glad to be here to make this presentation and thank you for coming. I want to especially thank Professor Tom Landy who gave me this opportunity to, to make this presentation and I'm glad that you are also here. Welcome to you all. The topic that I'm going to speak today is, as you could see, lived Catholicism and Indian experience. To begin with, the presentation is made on the day of the feast of Mother Teresa of Kolkata, September 5th. He's a saint of India and she is also so dear to call it at the Holy Cross because she had come here in the year 1976 where she was honored with an honorary doctorate. So I think it is fitting we honor her today as I make this presentation. September 5th is also the Teacher's Day as we are all teachers here. I want to wish you all a very happy Teacher's Day and I am glad I am making presentation on this day, a day which is very important for India and to all of us gathered here. The topic that I am going to speak is a study that I have made in an area called Kalgatgi. Kalgatgi is an area in Karnataka which is part of an Indian state and in that you will see, as you, would, you could read, Kalgadgi Taluk in India, in Karnataka, where I will study and make a presentation now on the religious Catholic practices. The Catholics, how they live in their ordinary life, their Catholic religion is what is expressed here. The place where I studied has Lingayas, a part of Hinduism in majority, but there are also other groups who live there. But Catholics are a small group, but they are a recognized, appreciated, admired group in the vicinity. Therefore, I thought I make a study of those people for our presentation. As you could see in India, I have taken in Karnataka. In Karnataka, Darwad district. In Darwad district, a place called Kalgadgi. And in Kalgadgi, I have taken a Catholic area located almost in the center of the taluk. And my presentation will involve basically three elements. First of all, I will make a brief survey of socio-economic cultural situation of the people. Secondly, I will look into the practices, the phenomenological description of the people, how they live their Catholicism. That is important because that will give an indication what meaning they give to those practices. That is the second part of it. Third, I am also making a small study of how Catholics are in relationship with the other. They don't live in isolation and these practices in fact 
help them to live in collaboration. Therefore, this is important fact of our study. And you realize as we look into these practices, they play a role, an important role. What role they play is what I am going to explore in this presentation. Coming to the first part, the socio-economic setting. It is important to know because people don't live in isolation. They always live in relation to the socio-economic setting. And if we look of the people who live there, they are basically agriculturists. And as agriculturists, they depend mainly on rain, for water, for harvesting. And therefore, as you know, it is so uncertain rains and therefore they take recourse to God that is the one thing they do. Secondly, they go to the nearby villages for some work or to towns or cities looking for a job. Therefore, you see unemployment is a serious concern and that affects their livelihood. There are a few small scale industries as you could see some furniture, some bakery and also some household projects. Women try to prepare some household products which could be sold in the local market. And some of the people, the young men go to PO, work as peons, teachers, petty traders in the nearby village. Hubli is a city that is close by, quite a few go there in search of job. And market day is Tuesday and all the women of the village bring their products, whatever they prepared to the market that day to sell and they make some money out of it. And you realize where they live. It is important to realize because the way they live, where they live will tell you what status they are in. For example, those who live near the church called Goody Woni, lane system, Goody Woni, they definitely belong to a higher socio-economic system than those who live in Maitreya Woni or rather you could say Dalit Woni. Woni means lane. They were where they live will decide what type of people they are, their socio-economic custom and situation. Caste system is an integral part of Indian society. You can't just avoid it. Though we Catholics say we don't believe in caste system, it is actually not true. But I must admit that the priest, those who became parish priests here, made a difference. Caste system was very strong many years ago, but I remember these two priests, Father Jacob, who became a parish priest, who later became minister in the state government, and later Joseph Rodriguez, another priest of the diocese who became a parish priest, they played a very decisive role in lowering the stigma of caste. So there was interdining, there was coming together, there was the sharing, sitting together. Therefore, the hard division of caste was narrowed down thanks to the efforts of these priests. Good relationship with other religions, very good relationship. And I, as I was going around interviewing the people of other faiths, I realized definitely there is a lot of friendship between those people. It is mutual actually. And you could see a beef eating episode. I must tell you about it. You know, in Indian society, beef or the cow is a sacred animal for Hindus. And Catholics of this village used to eat beef. And it so happened. Because the Catholics eat beef, the Hindus, especially these Lingais, looked at Catholics as impure, polluted and discriminated them. The Catholics paused for a while and asked for themselves, is there a way we can make things better? So they came together and said, all right, we as a community will decide we will not eat beef. The Catholic community decided we will not slaughter cows nor will we eat beef. And that brought in a big difference. And now the Catholics are respected and revered in the, in the village very comfortably. And therefore, they have a standing. They are no more treated as untouchables or rather people of lower caste. There is a parish church, Our Lady of Rosary. And that parish church is well respected by people of all groups, Catholics, Hindus. Everyone looks at this place as a place of prayer, place of worship, well revered, well respected and well honored place. Priest is very important for them, not only for Catholics, but for everyone. They all come to the parish priest for a counsel, for guidance, for support, for leadership. And priest plays a very important role. But I must tell you one more thing. More creative, more outgoing, more open-minded priest will make a big difference than who is narrow-minded, small-hearted. Because I have seen during the past studies, 
five parish priests, not all I could say of the top quality, but those who were good really made a very, very big difference. Food mostly vegetarian, not because they opt for vegetarian, they cannot afford non-vegetarian food. But there are special occasions during which they eat non-vegetarian. For example, Christmas, Easter, of course, they have non-vegetarian food. When they go out for the festival or pilgrimage, of course, they have non-vegetarian food. Health, more or less, quite okay. As I was looking at these people, they are not really sick. Minor cold or fever they may have. MC sisters, or whom we may know as Mother Teresa sisters, they come there once a week and give some medicine for them. There is, of course, a hospital there, but otherwise there is no serious sickness I could see. No much saving because economic situation is really, really poor. But whatever little they could save, there is a bank that could help them to reach out. For them, one important thing is religion is an integral part of their life. Religion is not one aspect, it is the aspect because for them there is no much other entertainment. Religion is their life. Therefore, the feasts, the festivals, pilgrimages are very important for them. Not only Catholic pilgrimages or religious centers, even Hindus, they play a very, very important role. And therefore, pilgrimage is an important part of this presentation as well, as you could see. Religious life could be expla explained through this way. Lived Catholicism, how Catholicism is lived <coughs> could be shown this way, three ways. First, how they live in the parish. As you know, we always call parish a domestic church. First, let me go how they live it there. But that is not the only way. They live in their homes, their religion, in their own way, difference. In, in parish, you need a priest. In home, they don't need priest. There are many ways they live their faith without the help of a priest. That's very important to focus on. And third, they go for pilgrim center. As I told you already, it is an important part, very important part of their life. And that we need to study. First, let me look at the domestic church, so to say, the parish. Parish church is important. There is one parish called Our Lady of the Rosary Church. Very important. Very important. They always come there to the church. Sunday, I see, a lot of people are there. All sacraments, they come there. Whether baptism or marriage, they are all there. Children come for catechism class. Sunday catechism class is always there. And as you see, they are good Catholics, so to say. They follow the rules, follow the regulations. Very well done, very well done. This is the church of Tumari Koppa. There are also these two priests played a very important role, very important role. Not only religious care is being taken, also other part. Education institution is taken care by them. There are schools and also a college. And therefore, the, the Catholic children are taken good care in the education level. The church plays an important role, not only for Catholics, but for all. For any important function of the village, people are all there. And not only that, marriage takes place, for example, people come. People come to the church. Even Hindus come to the church to get the blessings. And novena to Our Lady of Rosary is surely an important one. Feast of the church is very important for the entire village. Therefore, all of them come together to celebrate the feast. And for marriage or for blessings, they all come here. Hindus, Catholics, everybody comes there to the church to get the blessings. And they are all there. They come at any time. Because I remember when I was there, they were coming at night. Hindus make a procession, come to the church, light candles, keep some coconuts and just go. They won't trouble anybody. But everybody will be there for all the important functions. Therefore, you see they are carrying a procession. You will see also how the people are involved. I must make a mention of this picture here. If you see carefully, there are there's a couple here under the ter. It is because they believe going under the car or the so-called ter is a blessing. Therefore, they will make a special effort to go under the ter to get blessings. One more thing I must bring to your notice is a begging by a priest. The majority Hindus of that place belong to a group called Lingayatism. And part of their culture is a priest begs as a part of his training. There was a grotto to be inaugurated of the Blessed Mother in the parish. And the priest decided, I want to invite the entire village and want to participate in the process, the participation of the people as well. So what did he do? He went around villages from house to house, inviting the people and asking, 
whatever you want to contribute to the feast you are welcome and Hindus were deeply moved how do I know I met so many Hindu people those told me my goodness this priest is very different he is like us he understands our culture and for the feast I must tell you the inauguration of the Roto massive crowd entire village was there to celebrate I thought in that way being very sensitive to the local culture and incorporating into Catholic tradition made a very very big difference there are also many things people do without the help of a priest priest is important but there are many things they can do without the priest first of all devotion to Saint Paul the hermit whom we they call Vana Chinnappa Vana Chinnappa is the guardian of the all plants trees agriculture therefore for them it is very important therefore before they go for harvesting they will go to the shrine of Vana Chinnappa which is in the village in the village they offer prayers give, give some grain burn incense sticks and then they will go to the harvesting therefore you will see he is a very important person for them this is the picture of the Vana Chinnappa you would see also if you notice carefully the incense sticks the ash of the incense sticks is considered very holy very holy and you also see the feather of a peacock which is also considered very sacred even for Hindu even for Catholics this is the place where they come together for a gathering so after the harvest feast to honor and thank the Saint Paul the Hermit they come together and then they have a meal together no priest is required they manage themselves and thus they live their faith they keep up the usual tradition of living their faith they are, therefore you will see they have a scapula they have medals they have got rosary they, they practice penance abstinence they practice one of the important thing you see them practicing is bhajans bhajan what you call devotional songs they sing together, sing together with the local musical instruments, with the local tune, beautifully they sing. Therefore, you will, this is the one of the group where they sing bhajans, bhajans. You also see here, not only they come to the church to sing bhajans, they can sing in the homes their bhajans, on the roads they sing bhajans. Therefore, bhajans are so much part of their devotion, where people spontaneously, naturally begin to sing. They also, every act, every act is sacred. For example, marriage takes place. A strength of sacred of wearing the bangles is there. Therefore, get it blessed. They also bless their jewels. There is also feast of the cattle, feast of harvesting, feast of the instruments, a time for fasting. Therefore, all these, if you notice carefully, is practiced also by the villages in Hinduism. In Hindu culture, they have this. Therefore, Catholics have adopted it, or rather I can say christened it and make it their own. They, they will not forget their culture but they try to give a Christian meaning, Catholic meaning and they make it so beautiful. One more thing I must tell you about the, the system of what you see Vara here. Vara simply means weak. It so happens sometimes, it happened actually few times in their life. You will see there are occasions things are difficult. For example, no rain or cattle are sick. Then they come together and villages, all villages, Catholic, Hindu, everybody come together and say, we must do something about it. So they decided, let us pray and fast all together, Catholics, Hindus, everybody. So they say, let us choose one day, for example, Friday. On that day, we will not go for harvesting. We will not prepare special food. We will spend in a day of prayer and fasting. Entire village, not even the cattle will be sent for grazing that day. And that day they consider it special everyone therefore they say we'll have vara therefore you realize how the local people celebrate their religious life in interconnectedly so beautifully for them also the special pole for marriage is there where they feel this pole is the beginning of marriage life and we pray and make it sacred they do that way and also one more thing you realize the five stones in the field you know majority of them were hindus before the five stones symbolize earlier the five Pandavas. In Hindu, those of you who are familiar with Mahabharata, you know these five brothers used to protect the field. But now they are Catholics, they can't adopt the Hindu ideas. But they won't give up that as well. So you will see now, even now they will keep the five stones in the five borders of the field to protect their field. But now they will say it is no more Pandavas but five wounds of Christ. Therefore, they are able to interpret and give new meaning to the same old habits. They celebrate Deepavali, festival of lights, 
celebrated. And therefore, now you see, as they live their Catholic life, they live almost as they lived before, but they give a new meaning, new interpretation to the same customs which they did earlier. Now they may put a cross or keep a statue of the Blessed Mother or recite a rosary, but the practices remain as they are. If I realize it's so beautiful, it's so beautiful. This is a milk pole. As I told you, bhajan is the important part of their life. And one more thing in their life is pilgrimages. Very important, very important. I will focus on basically two. One pilgrimage to Our Lady of Health, Harihar, North Karnataka. Second, St. Anthony's Shrine, Dornalli, Mysore. This is the church of Harihar. You will see this is a pagoda style. It is rather, I would feel a little out of the way than local culture. But I must tell you, there are many shrines which are built in local tradition like this one. Unteshwari Mata in Gujarat. If you go around Gujarat, all the temples grew of the same type, but this is a church. The story of this shrine of Harihar is this. There was a Brahmin who was drowning. He got hold of a statue. At the, at, thought, at the beginning, he thought it is a statue, but then it was revealed to him in a dream that it is the Blessed Mother. He began to revere it, honor it, and therefore a small devotion of a family became a devotion of the village, and it has become a popular devotion of the entire vicinity. That the, what you see here is a tomb of that Brahmin who was a Hindu Brahmin who found the statue. This is the statue that was found by a Hindu Brahmin as he was drowning. Now it is seen as a miraculous statue of Our Lady of Health, Harihar. Presently in the church it is kept this way. And as you, as you look at the pilgrimages you realize people come there and the first thing they do is the time of purification. They go to the river and take bath. If you are aware, Hindus do that to go to Ganges, Ganga for purification. Here they go to Tunga river for purification. Then they climb the hill little for a short while, light the candles, drape the Blessed Mother with a sari, sometimes offer golden chain, lot of penitential services like rolling around, going in knees. Therefore, you will see a lot of penance and practices which they, through which they want to exhibit their love and care and devotion to the Blessed Mother. They also take holy oils, holy mud, etc. You see, this is the devotion. Tonsha is one of the ways they express their devotion. This is also another way. Lighting handles, of course, is everywhere. Draping in the Blessed Mother with a sari is also very much part of their faith. And one thing you realize also, you will see a lot of things here. For example, a person who prays for his hand to be healed. He will prepare or go to the market close by and buy one hand made of steel or aluminium. He will offer it to Blessed Mother and say, kindly heal me, heal my hand. And if it is healed, again he will offer at the thanksgiving. It could be steel one, golden one, could be variety. You would see that here. And this is also for children. There is a great need for progeny. Therefore, you will see this is a cradle being offered. This is the items that are being used in the devotion to the Blessed Mother. Flag is an important part of the ritual. Flag hoisting is an important part of the religious ceremony. Penance, as you could see. St. Antony's Church, Dornaldi, is in Mysore, in Karnataka itself. The legend goes, it was a statue found by a farmer in the field. It is quite different from the usual St. Antony of Padua, but he is honored as Antony of Padua. And the place where the statue was discovered is very revered and people take the mud and make an intention and put a sign of the cross there. If you look at the statue, now I am trying to look the attitude to, of people towards different things. First of all, toward Blessed Mother. A great reverence to the Blessed Mother. Mata, Amma is very much revered in the whole culture of the people there. 
whether it is tumarikoppa or in harihar mother is important therefore statue of blessed mother is seen with great reverence it respected venerated revered by all people not only catholics by all people she is of a great importance not only her statue is holy the vicinity also holy where the statue is kept that is also holy i remember in the parish church now outside the corridor there is a statue of the blessed mother and people tell us don't tell lie here because blessed mother is watching you therefore not only statue is holy the vicinity also is holy and pray to her all times all times and there are occasions and situations when there was no rain they had gone round with the statue of blessed mother and there is a tradition it rained because there was devotion of the people and god blessed her through the blessed mother vanashinappa is a saint paul the hermit who is a agricultural saint so to say so he is very important for them they pray to this saint to take care of their cattle take care of their field and therefore he is man of great power they believe and so much so at least half a dozen of them are named after antony and more and more people show great reverence to this saint and for them the car procession is very important the procession that they have during the feast is very important preparing for the feast participating in the feast is very important and some places i also seen women also for a short distance carry the tear because it is seen as a act of holiness therefore they would pour water wherever the tear comes pour the water put a, put the cloth on it so the people can walk much more gracefully therefore great reverence to the tear is given also the flower that used to deck the tear also is seen with great reverence they look at the church as a place of reverence revelation pilgrimage a graceful place a place of miracles if i look at the whole religiosity some key elements are seen first importance to the body physical is spiritual therefore they you would see most of the needs are for good health progeny prosperity their physical need is very important for them therefore every festivity of their ends with a meal therefore body is not considered something that is evil that is the instrument used to show devotion show love show gratitude therefore body is very important and clear distinction therefore they they know they are catholics and they even in the expression of their faith they show so much love of being catholic and devotion to god is so very clear distinct identity one beautiful thing you realize the autonomy of women women play important role in these religious expressions i was interviewing women and i found something very beautiful and the women told me father you know it is easy for us to be at home taking care of our children it is not easy for us to go out for a pilgrimage or picnic sorry for a picnic for example but our husbands allow us to go for pilgrimage because we go to the place of devotion place for prayer therefore once a year it really god given place we could go out of our home therefore tons of freedom holiday really made possible through these pilgrimages build solidarity if it's not only catholics but whole community comes together human community not only catholic community very good relationship therefore whenever there is a festival of blessed mother or of the church entire village is participating with deep reverence and respect that is something very very beautiful no conflict at all as we looking at the history of the place there is no incident of a communal conflict in that place at all they live in so much harmony because so much understanding between the group therefore you see the dialogue is in action dialogue is in action as i told you body is important therefore you will see the importance of sound light taste smell touch lot of visible expression so very clear so very clear fireworks are very always they lighting the tear and the surroundings flowers fragrance kissing the statue experiencing god in senses not in abstract cerebral it is physical expression is very important and is so beautifully expressed during these devotions therefore even penance celebration body is there so beautiful good health as i told you is very important for them food is very important for them therefore any important celebration ends with a meal feeding the poor also very important because they realize food is important we must take care of those who do not have it that is important part of the celebration therefore also as i told you the expression of faith in many ways have bodily expressions therefore religion is not monastic not mystical but really 
celebration with the human companionship. They were sound, light, visual presence you clearly see, flowers, singing, music, decoration you clearly see, and therefore they express their faith also with so much physical expression, sensual expression. And when they come back from pilgrimage, they always carry something, either holy water, holy oil, a coconut, a picture, to remember the great event, a great experience. Yeah. Prayers are expressive, as you could see. This religiosity, leaving Catholicism, take care of the local needs. They are not worried about universal church requirement. They are basic concern is, what is our concern? Rain, food, job, progeny. Therefore, they are concerned. That it is not that they don't talk about it at all, or nor do they forget the needs of the universal church. But basic prayer is of my daily life. Daily concern becomes part of their life. Therefore, their harvest, getting, having a child, having rain, is important for them. Important for them. And the devotion very local. Our Lady of Harihar, Our Lady of Velankani, Our Lady of Dori Mata. Therefore, you will see. Many of these devotions are locally connected. Therefore, they can easily connect themselves, not somewhere abstract, somewhere else, very much local. Therefore, they know the devotion uh, is very much close to their heart. Local culture is, you see, therefore you see when they bring to the church coconuts, the products of the field, flowers, their own dance, their own songs. Therefore, you see the local culture in their religious expression and therefore, they also know whom to go for what requirement. That's something very beautiful. Good, as I already told you, good fertile place for dialogue. I'm not going to speak more about it, as I already told you. This religious expression has brought them so much close to the people of other faith. It gives them identity, help them to keep surroundings well, celebrate together. It also helps them to be in touch with the sacred, provide opportunity to go overcome monotony of life. And also, a lot of optimism, because this belief in God has helped them to go beyond their frustration, depression, and that has given them so much hope and optimism that you, you could clearly see. And they, also, they can also express their faith through emotions. They cry, they laugh, they dance. You see expression full, galore. If it is not simply closing your eyes and meditate, they show it. You know them as they pray it. You will realize, as people express their faith, it is not only for elite, it is for all people. Even the local people, ordinary people can experience faith. Therefore, religion is not of a pujari or a brahmin, but even the ordinary person can encounter God. It's so beautiful. Therefore, this type of Catholicism helps people to personalize faith. And also, therefore, you realize it is people-oriented. It is part of local culture. And it takes care of their socio-economic religious needs. One more thing also we realize, it is inculturated. It imbibes the local culture, the needs of the people. Therefore, it is fully people-oriented religiosity, inclusivistic. It doesn't exclude anybody else. People of all faith have a place here. And people of all faith do find a place here. And therefore, this religiosity survives, has survived. And I believe it will survive for ages to come if they keep this way of expressing their faith. The believed Catholicism lives forever and it has survived so far and I believe if they keep up, will survive for ages to come in Khalgadgi. Thank you.